and welcome to the midday on an extremely rainy Tuesday. I'm Melanie Lawson and we're talking about your health and COVID-19. Joining us right now is ABC News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton who we always enjoy talking to. Uh, good to see you Dr. Ashton and let me dive you right too. in if you don't mind. Um, if you go for a booster for that additional shot that third shot everybody wants to know can you mix brands and if not how soon will we be able to see some of the other brands. Okay, well, remember, first of all, Melanie, the booster recommendation right now only applies to people who have been vaccinated with Pfizer, but we do expect to hear official recommendations for those who got Moderna and J&J &J in the next couple of weeks and months. Right now, that mix and match question, top of mind for so many people, and I actually asked Dr. Anthony Fauci that very question last week during our ABC town hall, and he said that in the next two to three weeks, we should be hearing the data from clinical trials that looked at just that every possible combination of people who got the variety of vaccines initially their initial course and then got boosted so to speak with vaccines from other manufacturers so we we look forward to hearing that data all right well something else that i know everybody's interested in learning about and that's these vaccine trials involving younger children 5 to 11. pfizer has already submitted its data from those trials uh, what does it look like in terms of how soon we may be seeing kids getting uh, these vaccines and what would you tell parents who are a little bit hesitant about it well, first, I, I am a parent, so, um, you know, I don't only wear the doctor hat in my in my household. I also wear the mom hat. Um, both of my children are college age, so they have already been vaccinated. My daughter did get a so-called breakthrough case of COVID um, and had hardly any symptoms. So, again, showing us that the vaccines do work, protecting against severe illness. But I think when you talk about the younger pediatric age group, 5 through 11, uh, you know, we, we could be here an official authorization from the FDA um, by even Halloween in a couple of weeks, um, meaning that children could start to get this vaccine regimen as early as the beginning of November. But I think parents need to understand that the FDA has set the bar extremely high um, in the pediatric clinical trials. They are not cutting any corners. So the vaccine doesn't only have to be effective, primarily it needs to be safe and they are they've emphasized to us here at abc news they're they're not going to be rushed by any date on the calendar as they evaluate that data well i want to switch to another topic uh, and talk about a, an extremely personal book you've written about what you say was the most painful time in your family's life and i certainly uh, can appreciate that and that's when your ex-husband took his own life why did you decide to talk about this and what are you hoping to get across to other people who have been in this devastating situation? Well, thank you for asking about it. And as you know, as we wrap up September, which is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, um, you know, I, I, I live with this every single day, Melanie. Uh, my children's father, Rob, died by suicide four years ago. And I wrote the book, Life After Suicide, because my children implored me to use my platform uh, to help increase awareness and comfort the millions and millions of people in this country who have been affected by the suicide death of a loved one. So it's not only our story, but it's the story of other suicide survivors. And what I learned is that, you know, mental illness, you can't see it like you can see um, an, a musculoskeletal injury, or it doesn't have the acceptance, if you will, that something like heart disease has. And so we tend to stigmatize it and diminish it and ignore it. And um, for anyone suffering right now, and certainly this pandemic has brought a lot more people, unfortunately, into that circle, um, the message is there is always hope, there's always help, you're not alone. And just as we teach children to dial 911 if they see an emergency, I think we all need to know by heart the suicide prevention lifeline number, which is 1-800-273-TALK, um, and, and just ask people how they're doing and then really wait around to hear their answer. And, and that was the question I was going to ask you and probably the toughest thing you can ask anyone in this situation. How do you deal with that sense of guilt uh, that maybe you may have missed something? 
Uh, I, I deal with that every single day myself, and that's obviously a very common feeling. Um, but understand that if we look at this like a medical problem and not, you know, just something that we, we could have done better, I think that it helps a little bit on some part, on the emotional part of my brain. Nothing will ever help that. Um, but that's why programs like this and talking about it and increasing awareness are so very important. You know, uh, Rob didn't have any of the classic signs of depression or being suicidal that we learn about in medical school. But you better believe that as a doctor who was married to him for 22 years, um, I live with that every single day. Well, we are so appreciative of you sharing with others, and we're so sorry for your family's loss. Uh, but thank you very much for being so, so honest about it for the rest of us. We appreciate it. Dr. Ashton, have a good week, thank and you. we'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. And we want to go to our weather right now because uh, if you aren't already in the rain, chances are you will be before this day is over. Rachel Breyer is joining us right now. Yeah, we do have that chance for these scattered showers and storms as we push throughout the day today. So if you are trying to get out and about, first off, know that those roads, if they are wet, it will take you a bit longer to get where you're trying to go. Also, make sure you are taking an umbrella with you. So let's take a closer look at what we are expecting as we head into this afternoon. Those scattered showers and storms expected to continue on and off as we head into the afternoon as well as going into possibly the early evening later tonight. It does look like we could see a little bit of a break. Now, does that mean we will be completely dry across the area later this evening? Not necessarily could still see at least isolated activity as we head into the evening and even into the overnight. But then as we head into tomorrow morning, that's when we are expecting another disturbance to make its way on in. And as it does, it could really bring in some widespread rainfall as we head into Wednesday morning, which yes, could definitely end up impacting your commute as this rolls on in. It's the possibility we could see lightning and also the possibility of heavy rainfall, which is really going to be our main threat as we head into the rest of the day today, tomorrow, Thursday, and even going into Friday and even into this weekend. Now, another one of our main threats, in addition, you know, when it comes to heavy rainfall, if we do happen to get a particularly heavy storm, we cannot rule out the potential for ice isolated street flooding and that's for today and then tomorrow the entire area also included in that flood risk. Now we are in the lowest risk though. There's a five to 10% chance of flash flooding happening near you, but just make sure if you are out driving that you take it very, very slow. And if we happen to get any flood warnings or advisories, make sure that you do not try to get out and drive. So not a bad idea to check in with us before you head home from work and also before you head into work as we head into the day tomorrow. So here's a breakdown of your rain chances. 60% chance for today, 80% though as we head into Wednesday, 60% again on Thursday, and then we see it bump back up again on Friday to a 70% chance. And even into this next weekend, continuing to see that moisture enough where we're going to be looking at a chance for at least a few scattered showers and storms. So as we head into the rest of this week and even into this weekend, most of Southeast Texas probably going to see between two to four inches of rainfall, but in isolated spots where we do get heavier thunderstorms, it's possible we could see over six inches of rain. And in those cases, we will have to watch out for that minor street flooding. And it's not just us seeing that heavy rainfall. It's also out towards the rest of the state of Texas, especially over towards the hill country and then up into the Abilene area. So it's going to be a very wet week for pretty much the entire state of Texas. So you can see those rain chances throughout this week. A lot of that cloud cover. Good news is with the extra bit of rain and cloud cover, it will actually keep our high temperatures down into the low to mid 80s. Melanie. All right. That is a good bit of news. Thanks so much, Rachel. And thank you for joining us for the midday. I'm Melanie Lawson. Have a great Tuesday and we'll see you this afternoon.